So to begin the demos here for chapter two, we're going to start at the top, which is with the chapter two numeric demos. We'll get to the character in string demos in a moment. Something that's important to remember is there is a difference in the variable types. When we're working with characters and strings, strings especially, there are other considerations than with um, strictly speaking, a numeric data type. So when we're working with variables such as integers, uh, floating point, um, doubles, etc., and char, so characters to a certain extent, we can expect things to work in one way. However, every time we work with a string, we have to consider our inputs and our outputs a little bit differently. So keep that in mind. It's just foreshadowing and it does come in handy when we get to, you know, the string demos. And it's one of these things that no matter how many times I harp on this, treat strings and everything else differently, there's going to be some of you who are like, nah, I'm good. And you're not going to be, but you'll see when we get that far. So the first thing we're going to do is just look at a, a smorgasbord, a, um, you know, a, a, a keyword palooza of stuff that's happening here in chapter two. They don't go in um, chapter wise order. So don't flip back through the text hoping the first thing I talk about is on page 22. The second thing I talk about is on page 26 because it doesn't go that way. So I am going to open this very first one, Sienna Sudden Locations. And again, we're going to fork that. And boom, we're in. So this is what you are going to see with yours as well, because I coded these as a different user so that I have to fork them and not make any inadvertent changes for you when you are running through here and looking at these. So the very first thing, uh, at the very top of the page, um, line number two in the middle of our replit window is include IO stream. Remember again from chapter two here, without IO stream, we get nothing. We don't have inputs, we don't have outputs. And for the kinds of programs that we're going to be developing, that's all we got. Now, there are other includes, and I have them here inside of this comment. There's things like C time. So that's see the language time if we need a clock for something there's math if we need things like pi which academically we will um, there's string if we're going to use strings so things like your name your first name your last name those are strings if that doesn't sound familiar it still means you skipped a lot of chapter two go back and look at those variable type declarations um, list, it's one of the things we'll talk about actually in C++ 277, our next course, not class. Um, so at any rate, these are other types of includes that you may have. Now, before we get any further, we've seen two types of comments here. We've seen the, the single line comment. So that's way up here on line number one. The forward slash, forward slash, I think it's this way if I do it backwards in uh, the camera, is one single line of comment. If you highlight a bunch of lines of comments, it's going to be forward slash star, and then when you're done, star forward slash. Now, actually, here inside of Replit, it's a, it's a lot easier. I'm just going to click over here on line 22. It doesn't matter where. So you'll notice I'm actually not before character one. I'm after character one right here in the middle of using. So I'm on a Mac, but if you're on a PC, it would be control forward slash. Forward slash is next to the right hand shift. If you're on a Mac, it is command forward slash. And you'll notice that that line got grayed out with a single line comment. And if I do it again, command forward slash, or if you're on a PC, control forward slash, you'll notice that that line gets commented back in. Ta-da! Um, remember again, and if it's not familiar, it's because you've been skipping. 
um, that when you comment out a line, though the compiler knows it's there, it is not part of the runtime. It is not compiled. It is simply ignored. So if we were to comment this line out, it would mean that we are not using namespace standard library, and that would mean we would have to say std colon colon in front of all of our c out or c in statements, which we don't want to do. Now, for those of you who are joining us not from CIS 276, but from out there in the greater internet universe, you can keep all of your comments on there's good reasons not to use namespace. Keep them. I understand. There's uses or there's reasons not to use namespace here. We talk about them later, but I don't care. We're using it. I'm the teacher here to hell with you. So if we keep scrolling down, so that's how we would do a comment. It's control forward slash or command forward slash. And what that does is instead of deleting a line, it simply makes it so that the runtime environment and the compiler do not see it. Now, these on lines 36 and 37 are what is known as variable declarations. The very first part, int and float, are the variable type, integer and floating point, so decimal-wise um, variables. And this, the second component, int variable and float variable, are the names that we are going to refer to them by. So from here on out, as far as C++ is concerned, anytime I use the, the variable name, int variable, C++ is going to know that that refers to an integer type. From here on out, whenever I use the, the variable name float variable, C++ is going to know that that refers to a floating point type variable. Now, these variable names could be other things. Please stay away from, just like the text, uh, uh, text rather suggests, is stay away from things like calling them int a, b, and c, unless a, b, and c represent, you know, portions of a mathematical equation. Stay away from using poor names. And as a matter of fact, I used poor names here just for, you know, the sake of uh, academics, essentially, because I want to be able to point them out. These are pretty poor names. So you would say things like int starting salary if you have an integer for a starting salary instead of int a. One of them dis, you know, conveys meaning to the next developer in the chain and to yourself. And the other one is like starting salary, we'll refer to it as a. That doesn't necessarily convey meaning. And actually, the first developer that's going to get confused by that is going to be you when you forget about it. So variable names here are important. These are more for demonstration's sake than they are for correctness. Um, we can also do a declaration by using a comma separation. So this way, if I have integer from user 1 and integer from user 2, I can simply separate them by a comma instead of having two separate lines, one saying int from user 1, semicolon, and then int from user 2, semicolon. It's good to mention it here that you should start building a muscle memory around at the end of a line hitting semicolon, then hitting enter. Forgetting a semicolon is the first big mistake that most of you are going to make consistently. And it's really a, a, a matter of muscle memory into, you know, getting that kind of an issue corrected. So down here on lines 44 and 45, what you're seeing is variable assignment. That's where we are taking a variable that we've declared, int variable and float variable, and we are finally giving to them values. So 4 and 5.25. Something that's important here is a question to ask yourself. If I said int variable equals 5.25, what happens to that 0.25? Are there decimal values um, that you can use for integers? No, there is nothing after the decimal place there. So 5.25 would be, in the case of an integer, simply truncated. So everything 
after that decimal point. It goes this way, I think, on the screen for you guys. Um, everything after the decimal place would simply be removed, so it would equal 5. Use the variable type that you need to use. If you're going to use decimal precision, use a floating point or a double in a uh, variable type. If you don't need decimal precision, you can use an integer type or a short or a long int, depending on what your needs there are going to be. Um, so that is how we would do assignment. We could also combine the two uh, between declaration and assignment. So here I have int variable two equals six, and on line 49 I have float variable two equals 10.50. So that's combining declaration int variable two with assignment equals six. Um, and here on line 52, I have a terminal output. That's what the C out statement is. Now I say C out. There are instructors who say shout or chout. I don't. It's just something that's worth knowing. Uh, so that's your C out statement. Um, so that's going to print over here, over there rather, on the right-hand side into the terminal window. Um, and then here, on line 57 and 58, we are going to display what the value of those are. A couple of things here to take notice of. Notice here on lines 57 and 58, on 57 I have int variable is equal to and then a space, and that goes inside of a double quotation. Remember, double quotations go out to the output window. So you can see that here in uh, the, the output statement in line 52, and you can see that here in 57 and 58. One thing to take notice of, if you'll notice on 58, I do not have a space after the word to and before my second double quotes. On line 57, I do have the extra space. When I hit run, let's take a look and see what the result of that is going to be. So again, over on the right-hand side, you see this is a terminal out with an end line. So that's happening here on line 52 is the statement that you see right here. Int variable is equal to 4. You are seeing that as the result of line 57 being executed. And here, float variable is equal to 25, equal to 5.25. Uh, that's because I do not have a space here after the word to. If I go ahead and run this again, I think that without exception, you would all agree with me that this display is more acceptable, right? Because there's a space between the end of the two and 5.25. Everything you see in the output window is a direct result of a decision that you as the developer have made. So I say this all the time. My, my five-year-old here at the house rolls his eyes when he hears me say this because this legitimately has been part of how I have survived doing you know, graphic design and development and, 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 and teaching all this while is slow is smooth and smooth is fast. The faster you want to type, the more mistakes you make. The slower you go, you catch things like that extra space between the end of the word two and the beginning of the word or the number 5.25. Go slow, especially here in the beginning. Don't benchmark yourself against some artificial other student. You don't know. And I'll tell you, that answer is always wrong. I've heard from thousands of students who are like, but they're typing faster than me. Maybe. But do you know what their fail rate is? Do you know what the mistake rate is? No, I do. The faster you go, the more mistakes you make. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast really does turn out to work here when you're developing. So, We've talked about the output here, um, and we're going to talk about the end line again here. Um, end line is your signal to the compiler that the 
you know, don't display anything else on this line. Go to the next line down. We also have a character literal here, and that is the backslash N. We're going to use those. It's just foreshadowing. We're going to use those when we come back with the string and character demos. But we've got a couple more numeric ones to work through first.